Sixty years ago, things in these parts were different. Elvis was everything. Cars were artistic badges of honor, and something to strut around town in that spoke of toughness and oozed cool. Movies were on the real big screen. Horror movies consisted of weird Hitchcock films and UFO invasion tales. Not these crappy slasher offerings the kids are mad for today. The innocence of America was still fully intact. No NAM, no readily available pill to keep you baby free, no war on drugs. Here in Maine, we got the newest films and the latest Elvis tracks a few weeks later than the rest of the country. We still had some clan activity, but the blacks tended to steer clear of the frozen tundra of trees and lobster boats. In 55, my best friend Ted McKenzie's Uncle Jed got caught beating the lone Negro boy in our neighborhood. The boy's family moved away, and Uncle Jed spent three days in Sheriff Olson's dingy little cell. We weren't perfect, but I'd say we managed to be relatively normal. All that changed, at least for me, the last week of summer vacation in 57. I was 12 and going into junior high, the big kids' school where boys smoked in the bathroom and made out with girls after school. And I was ready. My best friend Ted, on the other hand, was nervous as hell. He was sweating from his pits a flood of onion-smelling stains, and when he got two zits at the start of August, he nearly choked to death when I told him he should ask Missy Berry out. Ted was a jumbled bundle of nerves. I was ready to be James Dean. And then we found the thing under the rotting floorboards of the Spears house. Spears Corner about twenty miles inland from the beach, was small. We weren't the big city like Portland, but we weren't backwoods either. We had JT's Gas, Jenner's Grocery, Mackenzie's Hardware, a drive-in, and the A1 Diner. Joseph Spears and his descendants had founded and ruled over the town since the mid-1700s. Spears Corner had two cemeteries with their fallen kin alone. The church, on the corner of Spears Road and Highland Avenue, was the heart of the community. Pastor Thomas Spears made certain he saw our faces no less than three times a month, or he'd give you the greatest look of disappointment you ever saw. That devastating look was comparable to the one my mother had given me when Sheriff Olson brought me home for stealing penny candy from Jenner's last summer. Joseph Spears's house, referred to as the Spears house, remained unoccupied. Instead, it was treated like a shrine in his name even with plenty of kin still in town to warm its cooling and slowly decaying walls. The two-story home sat abandoned and called to Ted and I, as it had many kids before us, to come and see the ghosts of yesterday. That last Sunday of summer vacation, Ted found some balls. Maybe it was all the prodding over Missy, or maybe my confidence had become contagious, but he showed up at my door that morning with his new Big Harry's and demanded that we enter the empty house to prove we were ready to be among the big boys, to prove we were prepared to walk the halls with our chins high and ready to smoke in the bathrooms, make out with the likes of Missy Berry and her friends, and maybe even ditch a day to drink some of my father's beer. We left Pastor Spears's service and met up at the end of Highland Avenue. We have to do this, Ted said. It was somewhere between a question and a declaration. Yep, I reckon, I said. Neither of us spoke another word until we reached the dirt drive that wound around a row of pines, leading to the waiting home. I don't know why I thought of the house as waiting, but now I know it was. There were ghost stories attached to the house, of course, but those were just stories. The real aspect of entering the house that filled the kids of Spears Corner with fear and anxiety was the Spears family itself. Pastor Spears and his many eyes would surely lay judgment upon any juvenile who dare trespass the family's sacred temple. It was the thought of Pastor Spears and his damned look of disappointment that weighed my steps that day with cement. Ghosts were in monster magazines. Pastor Spears was Spears Corner.